Hello guys and welcome to episode 11 of my Minecraft world and boy do I have a surprise for you. Look at me, I am covered in diamonds and not only am I covered in diamonds, I'm covered in enchanted diamonds. Look, so I have this helmet which I got from uh, finding some more diamonds on y equals 11. I, I just can't find them on y equals 5, I don't know what that's about but yeah y11 is still the best in my opinion. So I've got Protection 4, Respiration 3, Aqua Infinity and Mending. That may not be the best and I think Respiration and Aqua Affinity probably cancel each other out, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but it's still pretty good with Protection 4 and Mending just for combat. I have this one as well which I got from a... Uh, again I built and um, uh, enchanted so it's got Protection 3, Unbreaking 3 and Fawns 2 which is pretty good as well. Um, and then I have these which I had in the previous episode and these which I both got from Villager Trading. Um, I also have this pickaxe which I think you know about, this diamond sword um, and I have this diamond axe too with Unbreaking 2 which I got from a Villager Trade. I also have um, from a Villager Trade uh, a diamond sword which is at my base I don't have it on me. Um, because it sits in my spider farm. It's in a chest in my spider farm and the reason for that is that it has Bane of Arthropods 3 on it. Um, a diamond sword with Bane of Arthropods 3 on it is sitting happily in my spider experience farm that I built in an earlier episode so please go check that out if you want to. Um, but now that Bane of Arthropods 3 sword allows me to pretty much one shot all those spiders. Um, so I just wait for five minutes and then just swipe away and it's big old XP. Um, but in today's episode uh, I wanted to come to this village uh, which is the Plains Village. Um, so I'm, my base is located between two villages funnily enough. My village is over there somewhere in the, in the right straight forward that way. Um, one of them is this Plains Village. Uh, it's quite a small one. Uh, I think it's got four houses in total. There's one on the hill up there as well, uh, which is also fenced off. You can see I fenced it off and lit it up quite well. Um, and that's because I kind of want to protect this area. Uh, and and because it's so far away from my base, well, I don't know exactly how far away it is from my base. Maybe by F3, it will tell me. Uh, it's about 300 blocks away from my base. 300 blocks is a pretty far distance to travel um, every time I want to come and either see these villages or maybe even use them for something in the future. Maybe I could use them for trading too or I could use them for raids to get those specific raid items uh, like the totems of, of Undying which would be pro probably be pretty useful now that I've got all this diamond gear. So today I'm going to go ahead and connect this village to my base but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. So my base is 300 blocks in a different direction. So uh, 300 blocks in the overworld um, gets divided by 8 in the nether. So what I'm going to do today is build a nether portal right here in this village. Um, and then I'm going to try and find my village, um, my village portal, my actual base portal, should sorry, sh I should say, should say, um, and then I'm going to uh, start creating a nether hub of sorts, whereby I'm going to connect everything I want to get to via the nether hub, and that includes the ocean, which is two thousand blocks away, by the way, because there's lots of cool, lots of cool stuff you can do in the ocean. You can get pickles, coral. Um, ships, abandoned ships, uh, monuments, every, loads of stuff uh, and I definitely want to partake in that. So let's go ahead and build a portal and I'll meet you when it's done. There we go guys, there is my nether portal. Um, I use dirt for corners because you don't have to fill in the corners, these corners aren't filled in either. Um, it just makes it easier uh, because I also have 13 obsidian left in my inventory so if the portal I go through in here doesn't like isn't that the correct elevation for the portal I made back in my base which it should be 
to be honest with you, um, then I can just alter it slightly. But now I need to go into the nether. Uh, hopefully I'm in a reasonably safe location. Uh, nope, I'm in a soul sand valley still. Only just though, this is like right at the edge. Uh, but this is pretty exposed. I think that is my nether portal. So it's 300 blocks in the overworld. It's just a few blocks in the nether. So if I take this and build it up there, I should be able to build a direct link between the two. But first let's get this quartz, because quartz is reasonably hard to come by and it gives you good XP. What the hell is that? I just got shot by something. Oh, there's a skeleton in the nether. This place never fails to make me nervous. <laughs> Right, so where is my um where's my nether portal? My nether portal is up there, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh get up there and then I'm gonna go ahead and once I'm back through my portal I can start connecting these two. When you're doing this you need to make sure that you go on the similar X and Y axis. Uh I think it's within eight blocks or something. Um not exactly sure what the math is on that one, but you need to be, you can go to a different Y uh, thing within a certain amount of blocks. I think that amount is probably 30 or so. Um, but you do need to be on the same or say similar X and Y axis, so I can't go too far away from this portal. Please don't be aghast near me. Hello guys, I'm back now and I have been doing some work. So this is the portal for my base. As you can see, I can see that fence post right there. This is actually going to be a much shorter tunnel than I thought it would be. Um, which just goes to show how much easier traveling in the nether can be. Um, but, you know, obviously once you've got past the safety issue. So first thing first, I need to build a safe tunnel from here to over there. Um, and once over there, I can then use this obsidian and flint and steel to make a new portal and um, go down and destroy the old portal, come back up, and hopefully uh, that links up a okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and start creating this tunnel. I'm going to create it entirely out of cobble because um, it doesn't particularly have to look pretty at the moment. I might go ahead and change this in the distant future, but for now, cobble is absolutely fine. Cobble I have in abundance, and I just want to get rid of it, honestly. So there's a ghast, literally right just over there. Um, and it's not making this easy, um, but I could move this portal to go at the same level as that one, but I prefer them all to be here. But once I've built this cobble, thing, tunnel, then the guys will no longer be able to see me, so they'll no longer, longer be able to aggro on me. And even if they do aggro on me, um, they're not likely to break much of the tunnel, uh, because cobble is quite a strong block. Nope. See? It broke literally none of the cobble. I didn't actually bring any torches with me, and I think I do need to light this area up because I've noticed a few skeletons spawning in the uh, in this soul sand valley so I should definitely get some torches but for now uh, I'll probably just do this as like a temporary torch Oop. light let's go ahead and continue building Okay guys, so I've built the tunnel. It's too high, which should hopefully be enough. I've lit it with these netherrack, which I actually kind of like. I might incorporate that into the actual thing rather than go and get torches. Um, and it goes around here, and here is the portal on the same y-axis as that tunnel up. So hopefully this should take me directly to the village, which it does. Perfect. So now if I go back through the village and it takes me to the bottom portal, I will need to go and break it.
Uh, it did indeed take us to the bottom portal, so I actually need to firstly defend myself. And kill that guy. Uh, and then I need to kill this portal. I didn't need to take the whole thing down, as I am very, very wary of ghasts. But I do need to at least um, break it, like I've just done. There you are. The good thing about um, nether portals is that when they spawn, like when you create one from the overworld and it makes one in the nether, it makes it with full... Oh Christ, where's that? Oh, it's a two? Where's that coming from? I can't even see. I can't even see where that's coming from. Uh, oh, I, it was just out of range. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tunnel up this way, I think. <laughs> I think it's a bit safer. There we go. Phew. Cool, so there is the portals connected. Now if I go through this one, uh, like so, and it takes me to my village, and if I stay here and let it load me back in, it take, should take me back to my tunnel. Uh, which it did. Yes, it didn't. I didn't realize when you didn't st when you stayed in it, it didn't actually take you back through. That must be a new thing, right? Is this normal? How weird! But when you go back in, it takes you through. I swear that didn't used to be the case. You used to be able to get stuck in like an infinite loop where you just. <laughs> stay in there and keep going backwards and forwards. But anyway, yeah, I want to incorporate these into the build. I think they look pretty cool. Is that a smart idea? Am I going to burn myself? I shouldn't burn myself. And I'll show you why in a bit. Although you probably guess why my, by my taskbar, uh, exactly what I'm going to be doing with this tunnel. Um, there is some rail in there, just here. So I'm going to be making a little railway from there. I'm going to make this a bit higher from here. I could just do a downward bit and yeah. From down there. Why does fire like not? What's happening? Do I have like fire spread turned off or something or what's? Normal, normal. Oh, there you are. Now I'm burning. That was weird. I thought I had a setting changed. But I had no idea what it could be or why it would be. Now, how many blocks between these two? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, oh, that's the magic Minecraft number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and then we want a powered rail as the second one with a redstone block underneath it to power it. And then we can go boop, 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 boop. I've built quite a lot of powered rail, so I don't need to be efficient with this. Uh, I kind of just want it to be nice and quick. Uh, I think you can spread them out up to eight or something, maybe maybe more, uh, but I'll probably go less than that. But I still want to keep it in a pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you are guys, welcome back. So I have just gone and got a minecart or two, so let's go ahead and load it up. So I put on the second one. Oh, I didn't actually put... Uh, one down here. So I put it on the second one because if you put it on the powered one it's just going to instantly go forward. So if I go in here 
and I give it a little nudge forward, it should power itself. There we go. And then it looks like I caught on fire on that last one. Let's get back. Oh no, I actually need to... It's a good job I took a test run. So that second one is powered. This second one also needs to be powered. So let's go ahead and drop a redstone block in in there, like so. Uh, that is so annoying. It's kind of annoying when you have a good pickaxe because it just insta mines things. Uh, and if I put this here, that should correct itself. Yeah, there you go. So let's go ahead and put ourselves in here. And off we go. And I want to go back. Wee. I do catch fire on that last one. Okay, I need to remove that. But that's that's basically it. So now I can get from my base to this villager to this village with a very quick, very easy to make um, minecart tunnel. I hope you liked this episode guys, I hope you found it helpful in connecting uh, long distance areas in your world. Please like and subscribe if you thought this was a good idea. Um, I'd like to see your thoughts and comments on it as well down below. And have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye.